Thank you everyone for coming. My name is Abiy Ahmed. I'm going to present my PhD proposal entitled with social capital and its role in traditional conflict resolution in Ethiopia, where the case interreligious conflict in Jima. Since I'm going to use the term social capital in many of my slides, I would prefer to start defining the concept of social capital first. Even though the concept of social capital is emerging as an important element uh, for social cohesion and social computing, but it doesn't have single definition. Rather, it's packed with different concepts and definitions that makes it difficult to simplify, classify, and analyze it. Some of the definitions are complementary, while the others are contradictory. And this critical limitation in conceptual and ontological status in defining social capital uh, resulted in weakness in theoretical and empirical studies. Even though this fluidity has got its own downside on defining the concept, but there are several definitions in literatures. The major definitions are a social network, mutual acquaintance, and social recognition. Social structures that facilitate individuals' actions within the social structure. Mold this, the quality and the quantity of social interaction, and the strength in communal interaction. All the above definition and other related definitions focus on network of social connections, while the definition by Putnam includes an additional dimension about how social capital plays a vital role to enhance a better achievement in socio-economic outcomes. And his definitions are uh, the most relevant definition to my study context. After we see briefly the definition, it's better to compare and contrast the concept of social capital with other well-known concepts. Uh, for that, we will see the nexus between social capital and development. Traditionally, the constant of capital were known by natural, physical, political, and human capital. But in recent years, social capital is included as an important ingredient for economic uh, development. The reason behind this, the visibility of this intangible capital uh, is more visible between countries and even between regions of the same country can result in different level of economic development. We can take Italy as an example. Northern part of Italy exercised the horizontal social capital while the southern part practiced the vertical social capital. Due to the better endowment of horizontal social capital as opposed to the hierarchical one, the quality life in north is much better than the south. This comparison also serves to compare with conflict. Conflict can affect both tangible and intangible uh, capitals. If you see, as an example, the civil war in, in Korea, the war between uh, uh, North and South Korea, was devastating for that nation in, in many ways. But for Japan, it was a great opportunity for their uh, rebirth of their economy. Likewise, conflict affects social capital both positively and negatively. In the case of interstate conflict, which strengthens social cohesion, that in turn creates a positive social capital. We can uh, take as an example Ethiopia-Italy war. During this war, it doesn't mean there was no any local issues, local agendas, but when the invader tries to attack the nation, the social capital plays on mobilizing national resources, communal thoughts, and prioritizing the agenda on defending their territory from the invaders. In this specific case, that conflict plays on enhancing social capital. On contrary, if you see interstate conflict, which weakens social cohesion to further perpetuate a violent conflict, we can take Cambodia as an example. Cambodians' political elite were ambi ambitiously uh, dreamed to recreate Cambodia in a way that is starting life from zero, sending 
the doctors to village to start life from agriculture, which eroded that, the social capital of that nation and decay the social cohesion of among different groups. In interstate conflict, we can see how social capital destroyed. So interstate conflict may play a passive role for social capital. On contrary, interstate conflict plays in a, in a very negative way. Not only conflict has an effect on social capital, but social capital also has both positive and negative effect on conflict. If we see as an example, bonding social capital can be perverted for individual or group gains and generates exclusionary forces to breed further conflict. We can take what had happened in Rwanda. Both Hutu and Tutsi appreciate their group's value while they, they lose tolerance among different groups, which led them to a very devastating conflict in that nation. On contrary, bridging social capital minimizes the detrimental effect of bonding social capital. We can see as an example a coup or a dur, the smallest institution in Ethiopia. In a coup or a dur, there might be different religious groups, different tribes together. In this specific case, that ukub serves as a glue on bringing different groups together. And that forum gives them to air out uh, if there is any grievances. And that, that airing out grievances also serve on averting conflict. Uh, and also build a cognitive one on trust, values, and norms. So social capital has both a positive and negative effect on conflict, like the conflict has both a positive and negative effect. Conflict resolution mechanism uh, can be done both formal and informal institutions are useful to club complex uh, societal conflict. But the formal one lacks mechanism to revive eroded social value and traditional deeply divided social groups and rebuild social psychology. We can take as an example a borna gurri conflict. Most of the time, the formal uh, institution jeopardize long-term peace building process and lose uh, to understand the root cause of the conflict, while the informal one plays a very great role on resolving the conflict. And also, it heals physical, psychological, and emotional trauma developed after conflict. Not only that, the informal institution also facilitates regeneration of broken social fabrics through reconciliation addresses the root cause of the conflict. We can also see several examples both from Africa and Ethiopia. If we take Gachacha of Rwanda, which is an informal institution and plays a great role in Rwanda civil war. Also, Ubuntu of South Africa is playing an amazing role on uh, supporting or filling the gap of the formal institutions. So those informal institutions in Africa, more specifically in Ethiopia, are very vital on uh, ma conflict management, also conflict aversion. <laughs> In our historical context in Ethiopia, the creation of modern Ethiopia, marked by power struggle and a conflict among different cleavages, including devastating religious violent conflict. Even though most of the religious conflict in the past were result of leaders, those who consider an instrument for their legitimacy. We can see a few examples. In fourth century, there was a conflict between Christianity and traditional religious. Not only the Beja rebellion, but also the Judaism were involved in this specific conflict and Judaism, uh, the followers of Judaism were sent or derived to the inaccessible mountains of the north during this war. Also, in 10th century, another notable history were registered in Ethiopia between Christianity and Judaism, were led by Yorit Gudit. 
another uh, notable phenomena of conflict were led by armor grind between Muslim and Christian. The Muslim from the east were attacking the central and highlander of uh, Christians. Also, another uh, phenomena will happened in 18th century during Imperial Oneness, right after uh, Bormeda Council around world origin between Muslim and Christian. This all conflicts were left deep scare and a fear in our society. Also, this all conflicts were not purely religious conflict. There was um, visible involvement of the political leaders for their own benefits. But even though this all conflicts left deep skin our society, but there are amazing a positive social tie. So despite long rivalry between Christianity and Islam, there are areas where minority Muslim lives in harmony with majority Christians and vice versa. We can see as an example, minority Muslim in Sidama and Gurage while uh, mi minority Christians in Harage. Not only minority lives in a majority area, but also Ethiopia is known to build marriage between Muslim and Christian. We can take as an example my mom and dad. My dad is Muslim and my mom is Christian. They live together for 50 years and they have nine children in common. This tells to build a small institution called family uh, in Ethiopia were not a problem to marry different religion or Muslim or Christian. This great tie, this wonderful tie, is uh, gradually uh, pressurized with external factors. Both indigenous Islam and Christianity have incre increasingly become vulnerable to external pressure, uh, notably from Middle East and the West respectively. This external pressure is using a digital uh, age to induct virtually the um, um, fundamental school of thought, also fundamental thinking is inducted to the youngsters through uh, virtual communication. Not only the external pressure, but also there is uh, a, com a competing narratives. Dereje noticed the divergent narratives by different religious group. Orthodox Christianity narrate this nation as chosen nation and land of Solomon in the Ark, while Protestant Christianity uh, defined it as a land of reform. Also Muslim narrate it as a land of the first Hijra. This competition in narratives may lead to conflict. So this is a time bomb and a potential source of conflict needs to be analyzed and managed well. From all this historical background, the invest this investigation focuses on a local violent religious conflict that occurred from September 2006 in a village outside the southwestern city of Jema. So my problem statement focuses on this specific incident. And this specific incident flared when Mesca celebration uh, bonfire of the Ethiopian Orthodox Christian ceremony sparked a conflict with neighboring Muslim in, in a mosque. And resulted in human casualty, destruction of property, lasting psychological trauma, religious um, division and destruction of social fabric and pre-existing uh, harmony. The current knowledge gap on this specific issue is post-1991 conflict studies either focused on the tastes of resource-based or ethnic identity conflict mainly. The reason for this might be the regime change. And as you all remember, in 1991, the, the current government when um, took place, the et ethnic issue become a priority and constitutionally recognized issue. So most of the scholars were focusing to study about this issue. But the stasis, however, suffer from oversimplification and they tend to equine the immediate cause of the conflict. Even though there were a comprehensive study about religious conflict in Ethiopia, including the case of Jimma provided by Dereje, even though his main focus was on the actual and historical phenomena. However, my study focused on social capital, post-conflict social capital building, 
traditional conflict resolution mechanism. Also, we do have different methodology. Most of the study were conducted by qualitative methodology while I'm, I'm using both qualitative and quantitative methodology so as to get the deeper uh, level of um, the conflict. And with the increase in the incident of interreligious conflicts in different parts of country uh, and hidden tension among different religious groups, this study will attempt to investigate cultural, historical, and political factors to identify the root cause of the conflict based on social capital perspective. Uh, we'll try to examine and assess the role of traditional conflict resolution and institution in post-conflict situations. Also, a case in point uh, is that religious forum for peace in averting and resolving conflict and replacing eroded social capital in uh, in that specific area so we'll try to see what this religious forum and why it established right after the conflict and after the establishment what's the practical outcomes registered by this informal institution if there is any positive outcomes how we can scale it up and escape fast for the use of uh, national level i uh, do have objectives both general and specific and my general objective uh, is to investigate the nexus between social capital and conflict also to examine the role of social capital in conflict resolution in Jimma zone of Ethiopia on cascading the general objective into the specific one I do have four specific objectives the first one is to describe the evolution of social capital over time the affected communities Second, to identify the underlying source of violent religious conflict in the study area. Third, to assess the nature of interplay, interplay between social capital and conflict in the Christian and Muslim communities in Jimma Zone. The fourth one is to explore the perception of Jimma Zone communities on the vitality of social capital and the religious forum peace. More. On operationalizing this specific objectives, I do have four research questions. And the first one is, how did the social capital that existed across different ethnic and religious groups evolve over time in Jim Mazon, where the violent conflict happened? Second, what are the historical, political, and cultural contexts that triggered the violent conflict in the zone? Third, what are the futures of interaction between social capital and conflict in uh, in the Christian and Muslim community in Jim Mazon. The fourth one is how do inhabitants of Jim Mazon perceive the role of social capital in maintaining harmony and the role of traditional institution which is religious forum for peace in helping and to avert and resolve uh, conflict. The theoretical framework uh, I've gone through several uh, readings and literatures and I've um, focused on six theories. And the first one is rational theory, which understands social capital is an informational resource emerging from the interaction between rational agents and needing to coordinate for mutual benefits. As you all are aware, social capital has got three major pillars. The resource, the topology and type of communication. But this rational theory focuses only on the resource part. The second one is trust theory. Fukuyama understood the social capital as at rest with the society, a single most important strand of the conceptualization of social capital, which is a very important element, but he left the structural part. He focused only on the cognitive one. And the third one, which is embeddedness and autonomy, which describes social capital in a very better uh, ground. Uh, and it it's, uh, tries to understand social capital both in a micro level and a macro level. A micro level, which is bottom up, embeddedness is integration, and autonomy is linkage. While at macro level, which is top down, embeddedness refers to synergy, and autonomy is to organizational integrity. And the fourth theory is the one Putna adopted from 
whole quirk for horizontal relation, which is bonding and bridging, refers to in integration and linkage concept of whole quirk. And the, uh, the fourth one is the hierarchical or vertical relation, refers to unequal distribution of power and social structure, which Coleman uh, understood it in a way that social capital is an equal distribution of power and social structure. The fifth one tries to uh, classify social capital into structural and cognitive part. The structural social capital refers to network among uh, unequal groups and also equal groups. And cognitive social capital entails trust which Fukuyama focused but up, uh, up off try to uh, incorporate the trust part in cognitive one. And the last and sixth theory is social, political and economic context. And this theory, both vertical and horizontal interaction are a product of social, political, economic uh, settings. Therefore, the most suitable conceptual framework that fits to the context of this study is the one that allows us to examine broader aspect of social capital, which is both horizontal and vertical social capital, as well the macro settings also must be included. And from this conceptual uh, framework, I draw the analytical uh, framework which tries to analyze uh, micro level, meso level and macro level. In micro level, we will see individual level interaction or household level interaction. In meso level, in small group level or individual with an institution. And in a macro level, we will see institutions conflict resolution and social political environments, which means we'll try to assess or to analyze the triggering point, the proximity and the structural level of problem. To understand the root cause, we must focus both on structure, proximity and triggering point. Otherwise, it will be shallow study so as to fill the gap of the previous studies i want to focus from micro meso to macro level before i um, go to my methodology i think it's very important to describe uh, the study area Jim Mazon has a total population of 2.5 million people and out of this 50 percent is women when we see ethnic composition Oromo is 87%, Amhara is 4%, and Yem is uh, 3%, and others, uh, others will uh, cover the remaining. Religious composition also, Muslim is around 85%, Orthodox Christian is around 11%, and Protestant Christianity is around uh, 3%. But I focus on Chago, Bashasha, Asendabo, and Chello where the cost of the violent conflict were huge and also the conflict resolution effort focused. So my focus area is this four cabales. Uh, in choice of method which rooted in epistemological and ontological uh, commitment. Um, most of the um, investigator affiliation to certain discipline gives a narrow pass to the choice of methods and affect the neutrality of method choice. But for my study, for this study, we'll use mixed method from the technical perspective to meet the objectives that stated and to give a holistic picture of the study. But it doesn't mean mixed method is superior on other method. But my context, it can give a holistic and a better understanding of the subject under the study area. So for my qualitative uh, method, to assess the nexus among social capital, violent conflict and traditional conflict resolution mechanism in depth, also to examine how violent group conflicts shape both social capital and traditional conflict resolution mechanisms. The tools I'm going to use for uh, my quantitative, quantitative method is focus group discussion, interviews, uh, also network analysis or systematic observation, and triangulation of uh, data will be there. In my quantitative method, 
will assess the perception of Jimma communities on the vitality of social capital in traditional conflict resolution mechanisms, also to identify factors that directly and indirectly affect the traditional conflict resolution mechanisms to reach and complement the result uh, obtainable in the qualitative uh, data analysis. Uh, for this, I'm going to adopt a SCAT social capital assessment tool, which is a set of empirical tools for measuring social capital and developed by World Bank. It's developed for low-income settings and the research conducted using this tool were um, uh, in Peru and Vietnam. Also very uh, helpful for my study area with little modification. And I'm going to use as a tool for my quantitative method, exploratory data analysis for cross tabulation, density function in uh, descriptive statistics. Also, integration will be applied here. To will be this will be um, used to identify and analyze focuses that hinder and enable traditional conflict resolution mechanisms. In uh, sampling design and techniques, multi-stage sampling technique will be applied to select respondents. And purposive sampling um, for focus group discussion, I'm going to have 12 focus group, focus group discussions, three from each conflict area, and eight to 12 participants in each group. But in each group, identical uh, member of um, uh, identical individual will be uh, participate, like women, men, and religious leaders. I don't mix men with women or youngsters with the elders. The second one is uh, for um, key informants. I'm going to use the victim family, politicians, uh, local leaders, intellectuals, religious leaders, and religious forum for peace. And for this, I'm going to use a snowball technique. At the entry point will be the known individual. Then I will chain through those known individuals to uh, other relevant individuals so as to get a proper information through interview. To identify targets for network analysis, I'm going to use market, wedding place, funeral ceremony, mosque and church attendances, and holidays will be systematically observed. For simple random sampling detail, uh, the survey will be implemented at the household level, and accordingly, uh, the re representative's uh, random sample size is calculated to be 768 household. I use uh, the uh, Watson uh, recommended standard uh, for uh, read this number. For operationalization of the variables, I do have one independent variable, which is social capital, also another uh, dependent variable, which is traditional conflict resolution. This traditional conflict resolution is the outcome of social capital. That's why uh, it is considered as dependent variable. But these two variables is not directly linked. There is an independent variable which is intergroup conflict. And I'm going to use a SCAT, social capital assessment tool, to analyze the independent variable. Also, CAF, conflict analysis framework, to analyze the interdependent variable. Ethical consideration is there in my uh, studies, and the consideration for the, the cultural, psychological, moral, and religious aspect of the study area, also confidentiality of respondents and identify and their privacy. Also, uh, we'll try to elaborate the academic purpose of uh, this study. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you.